Hello guys and welcome to part 4 of a 5 part tutorial series that I'm putting together for making this character in Blender 2.9 from scratch. Now if you haven't already seen the first 3 parts where I cover the actual modeling of the character, go ahead and check that out on my channel. So this is pretty much part 4 where we're, where we're going to be approaching the actual armature here and setting up constraints for this character. Now I am making these blend files available with some bonus content. Um, and all of these videos that are downloadable on my Gumroad. So if you're interested in purchasing that, you can check it out. If you're not, you can just continue following along with this free course on YouTube while we're making this character. So that's what we're gonna do now in part three. I mean, this one, which is part four, where we're gonna be covering um, making the rig for this little character. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get started. Okay, so to get started with the rigging, we're gonna start by adding in our first bone. So let's go Shift A. And we're going to go down to our armature options, just click on armature. And you can see it's added in a single bone here. Now one thing I suppose we do need to keep in mind is the scale of a character. So I'm just going to quickly open up my original here. And I'm just going to have a look at the scale. So if I go shift A and I add in a cube, we can see that's kind of the scale we're dealing with here. So let's just quickly have a look at my character, the one we're doing. And I'm just going to go shift A, just add in a cube. So I think what we can do is probably grab this character and the glasses, so everything we've modeled, and make sure your cursor is obviously in the center. So Shift S um, cursor to world origin, and this is go enable our 3D cursor mode here, and we're gonna go S. This is scale it down to about there. So that looks a lot closer to my original. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and close my original one here. So now we have the scale established and we still have the glasses and the character active or selected. We're gonna go Shift A, just make sure to apply the scale. That's super important. Now we can go ahead and select the cube, hit X and just delete. So now we know we're on the same page as far as scale goes. So let's just set this um, transform pivot back to median point. Okay, so let's get into this fun part, which is rigging. So select the armature here. Tab into edit mode, and we're gonna leave this bone here at the base. That's gonna be our root controller. So select the sky, and then go Shift D, Z, and bring it up to the crotch here. Now we do need to go to our um, armature settings here. We wanna go to the viewport display, and so we can actually see what we're doing, and make sure to enable in front. Now that's gonna ensure no matter where we are looking from, or where the bone is placed, inside the mesh or outside the mesh, we can see it all the time. So now we're not working um, in the dark. So let's grab this point here. We're gonna go G, Z, and bring it down. So this is gonna be the hip. And then we're gonna go into our right orthographic view. I'm gonna go into wireframe anyway, just so I can see the, the wire geometry here. So with this knob at the top selected, I'm gonna go E to extrude. I'm gonna extrude to here, which is the middle point of the chest. And then I'm gonna extrude one more time to the bottom of the neck. Then I'm gonna go E and extrude up to the top of the neck there, this is gonna be our neck, or just the bottom of the head here. So just like that, and then I'm gonna hit E to extrude, I'm gonna extrude up to about here, and that's gonna be our head bone. Okay, so let's just quickly go ahead and name things. In fact, before we even name things, let's go to our viewport display under the armature settings here. So under the viewport display, let's go to octahedral, let's change that to B bone, and let's start with this bone here. So click on this bone, click on the little bones tab, and let's name this guy root. Now it's very important that you don't click on this guy here and then name it here, because this name under the armature here is just the name of the overall system of bones. So if you actually want to rename an individual bone, make sure to click on a bone. And it's super important because the naming is going to matter. This won't work very well later on for you if you don't name things properly. So go ahead, name that root, grab this one at the bottom, and let's call it hip. And let's call grab this one here. And if that's selected, let's just go um, Control Alt S and scale it down. This one as well, Control Alt S. And the neck, Control Alt S, make it a bit skinnier. And the head, just a little bit like that. Just so it's a little bit nicer. So we have the hip named here, hip. Let's grab this bone here, bone 002. Let's call it um, spine one. And let's grab this one at the top and let's call it chest. So I'm just gonna call it chest. In fact, you could just call that spine, but I'm just gonna leave it at spine one. So we've got the chest here and then we're gonna grab the neck. Let's call it um, neck. And obviously the head, no surprise to you, we're gonna call it head. Okay, so we have those done. 
And by the way, over here in the armature settings, if you come down to the viewport display, you can enable names. So you can make sure that everything is named so you haven't missed anything. So I'll go back to the bones tab here. So let's add in our bones. It's going to be for the legs. So let's grab this hip here. And in our front orthographic view, we're going to go Shift D and we're going to move it to our right, but our character's left side. So it's actually the left, even though it's right from our perspective. Then we're going to go R and rotate it upside down like this. I'm going to grab this um, con um, knob at the top, bring it over here, and we're going to bring this guy here. So select this guy, and then go Control Alt S and scale it down to make it a bit skinnier. And let's call this um, socket dot capital L. Now I cannot emphasize enough that the dot capital L is extremely important for mirroring it over later on. If you do not name it properly with the um, end conventions, it's not going to work. So make sure dot capital L. It can't be dot space capital L. It can't be dot little L. It has to be dot capital L. Okay, so um, I've called it rocket, so socket. Just make sure it's socket. Socket dot capital L. Then we're going to select this nub down here. And we're going to go into wireframe and we're going to go E, Z, and extrude it down to the knee. So the knee is up to you to determine where that is. But for me, like I said in one of the, I think it was part three, when we were refining things, I said it's got to be where we have at least three um, segments like this. So we've got an edge here, an edge there, and an edge there. So I'm going to place it just a little bit forward like that. So that's good. That's where our knee is going to be. In our front view, I'm going to move it. In fact, I'm going to grab the whole bone in the front view and just go G, X, and move it over just so it's in the middle of the leg. Then I'm going to select this nub at the bottom. I'm going to go E, Z, and extrude it down to where the ankle is. Go to my right view, G, and move it back a little bit so it's in the middle of the leg. And in our right view still, I'm going to go E to extrude this. And I'm going to extrude it here. And that's just going to be our foot. So we haven't really named these yet, so let's just quickly do that. So to stay on top of things, um, we've already named the top one soccer.l. So let's just grab this leg. And under the bones tab here, let's just call it um, upper leg dot capital L. Select this bottom one and this is called lower leg dot capital L. It doesn't really matter what you name the actual thing, but the dot capital L has to be the same. Okay, so then we're going to select the foot here. Let's just call it foot dot capital L. Now we don't want to just rotate these um, like a puppet, so we want some sort of controller, or IK controller. So what we're going to do here is we're going to select this nub in the middle here. In our right view, we're going to go E, Y, and we're going to extrude out a bone on the Y. And let's select this bone. Let's go Alt P, and we're going to disconnect the bone. And we're also going to go Alt P, and we're going to clear the parent. So now it's just a separated bone. And if that bone's selected, let's go to our bones tab. And over here, under the little bone, let's just call that bone um, foot IK dot capital L. So now that's going to be our IK controller. In fact, I'll quickly show how it works. Let's go into our pose mode. And then if we select this guy here and we hold in shift and we select the lower leg. So this guy first, holding in shift, select this bone to make it active. We're going to go Control Shift C or Command Shift C, and we're going to make this inverse kinematics. Now, if we select the lower bone here, and we go to our Constraints tab, we can increase the chain length to two, which means if we now grab our IK bone here and we move it, it'll it'll affect these bones two chains up, just like that. So that's what we want to see. Okay, but at the moment. Our, if we rotate it, our foot's not rotating. So what we need to do is we need to go into edit mode, then grab the foot here, and then holding in shift, we need to select the IK and then go control P, keep offset. So now if we go into our pose mode, we select the IK and we move it. Not only can we move the leg around like this, we can also rotate the foot at the same time with just one controller, which saves us a lot of time and that's really good. Okay, so let's just make sure everything's named. We've got the root named, we've got the foot.l, the foot ik dot capital L, the lower leg dot capital L, upper leg dot capital L, socket dot capital L. So let's go back into edit mode. I'm going to select the socket dot capital L, holding in shift, select the hip. Then we're going to go alt P and we're going to go keep offset. So now if we go into post mode again, 
we can select the hip and the hip, the leg will automatically work with that as well. Okay, but if we select the, the root controller, nothing goes along. So let's go back into edit mode, select the hip here, and then holding in shift, select the foot IK. So both of these, then holding in shift still, select the, the root controller, go control P, and then go keep offset. So now if we go into oppose mode, this root controller will move everything. But if we bring our hip down, the character can sit with just one easy control. And we can also control the foot separately like that. So everything so far is working fantastic. Let's get into making the arm. It's very similar to the, to the foot. So let's just go, or the, the leg, back into edit mode. We're gonna select the chest bone here in a front of graphic view, shift D to duplicate it, right, right, um, just rotate it in your front view. Now it's doing something funny here, so let's just grab this knob and just move it. Okay. I guess the reason it's doing that, because in our right view, you can see the chest bone isn't quite straight, so one way to fix this is just to select this guy we just moved, and then go S, Y, 0, and it'll flatten that out. You can also go, um, I believe, Control R, and just rotate it back into place, just like that. So just so it's nice and straight. So we want to take this guy, and we want to place it just here, kind of just above the armpit, but just where the shoulder is. Then grab this knob here and place it right in the middle of our arm here, where it's going to deform. The elbow, so right there. And we want to make sure that this guy isn't too forward. So we're going to move it back just a little bit, so it's right in the middle of the arm there. And this is called this guy. Get our bone tab here. This is called this one upper arm. Dot capital L. Once again, make sure it's dot capital L. With it still selected, holding and shift, select the chest bone, then go Alt P, or sorry, Control P, keep offset. So now we've parented this to the chest. So if we go into our pose mode and we select the chest here and we rotate it, you can see that the arm goes along. So back into edit mode. Let's select this knob here in our front orthographic view, go E to extrude, and let's extrude it down to here. Go to our top view and just make sure it's kind of where the wrist is. So the wrist area, right here, like that. Cool, and let's call this bone lower arm, arm dot capital L. And you can see here, so this one's named upper arm dot capital L, this one's named lower arm dot capital L. So let's extrude the hand bone. So I'm gonna grab this knob here and go E to extrude, bring it in here, get to the top view and then um, I'm going to select the hand here, I'm going to go Control alt s and just scale this hand bone down a bit. And let's just call it hand dot capital L. Now I'm not going to make finger bones for this, um, just going to keep it simple. Um, but if you want to, you could easily just duplicate this bone, add in some finger bones here and then just parent them to the hand. And it's pretty straightforward, I'm pretty sure you guys can figure that out. So now we also need to make an IK. So let's just grab this nub here. Let's go E and just extrude it out like so. Select the whole bone and go Alt P and then disconnect the bone. Alt P, clear parent. Then select the hand bone here, holding and shift select the IK. Control P or Command P, keep offset. Now we also wanna just name this. So select this IK bone uh, over the bone tab here. Just make sure to call it hand IK dot capital L. So let's go into our pose mode. Select the IK bone here, holding in shift select the lower arm, control shift C or command shift C, and then enable inverse kinematics. Now if we select this IK bone and we hit G, we can see it's moving. But what we need to do is just select the lower arm here, go to your constraints and just make sure to increase the chain length Otherwise, it's gonna affect everything in the hierarchy. So let's bump it up to two, just like we did with our legs. If we grab the IK now, it's only affecting the relevant bones. As you can see here. We can rotate that guy. So this is eventually gonna be our arm. Bring it forward, bring it back. So this is hit A to select everything. Alt G, Alt R, Alt S. Just to set everything back into place if you've moved it in object mode. Or, or pose mode. Okay, so what can we add next? So just for this um, 
YouTube tutorial. I'm gonna keep this basic. In the one you can purchase in the description below, the, um, I believe it'll be a six part course. I'll add in an extra bonus video along with the blend files where I'll show how to add some more advanced features to the rig. But now that we have this done, what we can get on to doing now is mirroring it over to the other side. Okay, but before we do that, I've just realized with this, um, just go back into edit mode. I think that the ankle point here is not quite correct. So we just need to select the IK here, holding and shift select the knob. So we can just move this. And also just holding and shift select this knob underneath it. So just these guys here should be able to do that. You can also just hit C for the C select tool and just select that like that. So we're gonna go G, Z and just bring it down because I don't think that's gonna be the bending point. That the socket of the foot sits about there. Okay, so once you've done that, that should be okay. Um, we might even be able to grab the tip of this foot just for a little bit of extra control. Just grab this nub here in your right view, just move it to the middle of the foot. And then go E, Y and extrude it forward. And this is cool, grab this guy here and go to our bones tab here and let's just rename it um, toe dot capital L. Okay, so now if we go into our pose mode, we can still control the IK here. In fact, that IK is a little bit too long. So just go into edit mode, just grab that knob and move it forward on the Y a little bit. Okay, that's better. So now we can grab this foot IK and we can control our foot, but we can also um, come in here and control the toe as well to create a little bit of bend to our um, foot. So once you've moved everything to test it out, just select everything, Alt G, Alt R, Alt S, just to set it back into place. Okay, so now once you are happy with the rig and it all looks okay, we're gonna get into the next part, which is just um, duplicating it over. So a simple way to do that, just back in edit mode. We're gonna select all of the bones. Okay, so we're gonna select all of the bones that we wanna duplicate over. So those are all the ones of the .l extension. Okay, so it's all these bones here. It's all of the arm bones, all of the leg bones and their IKs. And with those selected, you're gonna to go to armature and you're gonna go symmetrize. And if you named them properly with the .l extension, it would automatically have renamed and duplicated the bones on the opposite side with the appropriate .r extension. And this is not just useful for duplicating it over in edit mode. When it comes to animation and copying over data from one bone to another, the naming conventions are extremely important. So this is the proper way to do it. And let's quickly test out the rig now. So let's go to our pose mode. And now we can try it out. So let's grab this guy. We can see that's working cool. This is okay, but at the moment, we just also need to grab back in edit mode, just these hand IKs. Select both of them. Holding and shift, just select the chest here and then go control P and go keep offset. So now if we grab the um, hip here and we, we bring it down, the arms go along and the head, the body, everything else but we can still individually control and rotate the IK for the hands like this. So we can control this, even though we can still rotate this independently. It gives us a bit more control. Okay, also just grab the foot IK. Okay. Let's test it out like that. Now you could also add in targets for the knees to control the direction of the knees. I'm just gonna keep it simple for this tutorial. We won't get into that. So let's just hit A to select everything. Alt G, Alt R, Alt S. In fact, there might be something I'll include as a bonus content um, in the description below on my um, Gumroad. Because I am putting this together for purchase as well. Okay, so that's pretty much our rig and constraints done. So what we're gonna do in the next part, and I think that's gonna be part five, because this is part four, we're gonna be doing the weight painting, where we're gonna be essentially attaching the rig to the mesh here so we can control the mesh. And that's gonna be really fun, because it's at that point we can start really seeing the character come into its finishing stages.